Hey traders, welcome back to the weekly Forex forecast. Last week was a very slow week in the Forex universe, and this is characterized by the inside week we saw in the dollar index. When the dollar tends to have an inside week or lacks volatility, the Forex universe overall tends to kind of lack volatility as well. And why did we have a lack of volatility last week in the Forex universe? Almost certainly it's because we have US CPI coming up this week on Wednesday. And the reason this is so important is because we've seen a slowing of the US economy. We've seen the labor market deteriorating, the unemployment creeping up, back up in fact to 3.9%, non-farm payrolls coming in soft. And now eyes are on CPI to see whether the Federal Reserve has the room to ease monetary policy and try to address the issues facing the US labor market now. And the slowing economy, of course, which we've seen released in previous PMI surveys, both the manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMI reports came out below 50. So can the Federal Reserve lower interest rates, ease financial conditions in order to offset this slowdown? Or are we going to see inflation coming out hot, forcing the Fed to keep rates high and therefore exacerbating the slowdown and the weakening labor market even more. So this is why we saw a lack of volatility last week. I do think we're probably going to see the same leading in CPI. And you can see the US dollar is sitting right at an area where it can go either way heading into next week. We broke, this is a major breakout because it's the break of a making a higher high in this case, there's your high, there's your higher high, and now you have a higher high here. And you also have a higher low over here. So we have the makings of an initial trend. This is now a trend change. And we're in the position where if we start to rally higher and we break through the 107.35, of course, we kickstart a second major reversal because now we have a higher high over here. And that is higher, of course, than this high. And that this is also a low and a, and a bigger high low. So you see this very, very often in markets, in Forex markets, especially in the lead up to major catalysts. I see this all the time. Markets will get themselves into a position where they can kind of go either way. I don't actually know the reason why that is the case, but that tends to be the case. Because of course, if we fail here, you know, if we get the catalyst coming out and we fail and we have a bigger sell off next week and we break back down below this high, that of course is a failure of this trend change or a reversal. And you would be expecting a pullback and a potential head and shoulders for a continuation down. So we're sitting right at an area we can go either way. And as a result, going into next week, what I'm going to be looking for is the ability to be reactive to the CPI report. We're going to look at a couple of dollar pairs in the event that CPI comes out hot. And we're going to look at a couple of dollar pairs in the event that CPI comes out softer than expected or cooler than expected. And trading post CPI next week is going to be one of the top themes that I'm going to be looking at and covering in today's video. Okay, so let's have a look at the performance metrics heading into next week in the hedge dash algorithms. And you can see that the Australian dollar is the number one long idea to the upside. And this is reflecting this current kind of inflationary, you could even argue now stagflationary kind of regime that markets have been trading in. And after that, we see the New Zealand dollar as well. So actually you're looking at the two most risk on currencies out of everything that you're looking at here. So out of all of these currencies, these are the two most risk on, but they are also commodity currencies and they tend to outperform an inflationary, it could be stagflationary, which when you see low growth and high inflation or actually just a reacceleration of inflation. And what it looks like we're getting recently is a shift from a kind of reacceleration of inflation where growth and inflation is high to actually more of a stagflation as you've just seen with the softer labor market. But either way, the currencies are responding primarily to inflation as opposed to growth. And we're seeing this reflected in Aussie and New Zealand being the top two long ideas. So I will be looking at that heading into next week, followed by the euro. You can also look at euro pairs to the upside. However, the US dollar is kind of sitting in the middle here. And with the CPI report, you know, the dollar pairs and probably Forex overall will kind of chop around, do nothing and then start to move from Wednesday. So because of the CPI report, the US dollar theme is going to be something I'm looking at, but because it's sitting right in the middle and we could see CPI go either way, I want to be looking at, as I said earlier in the video, a couple of opportunities post CPI in the event of a stronger dollar and a couple of opportunities in the event of a weaker dollar. So we can be reactive to the CPI report next week. On the short side, you can also look at the yen. This is still the number one short idea. And last week we introduced them again after the intervention. Because of the risk of re-intervention and the Ministry of Finance talking again about intervening, we saw the yen sell off last week. 
as we're kind of looking at in last week's video. So they're off the table for me once again this week. If you want to look at yen shorts, of course, you can do that. But there is risk associated once again with the intervention. Just bear that in mind. So coming into this week on the short side, we're going to be looking at the Swiss franc to the short side, the CAD and the pound primarily versus the Aussie New Zealand. And also we're going to be looking at the US dollar. So we're going to look at Aussie franc to the upside in today's video, Aussie CAD to the upside, pound Aussie. We're going to be looking at New Zealand franc. We're going to look at New Zealand CAD, pound New Zealand. And then also we're going to be looking at the US dollar pairs with the Australian dollar and the Euro because we cover Euro dollar every week. I will be looking at these to the long side versus the US dollar if we get a weaker dollar. So therefore, we get a weaker dollar, CPI comes out soft, the dollar sells off. I would be looking at Aussie dollar to the upside, Euro dollar to the upside. You can also look at New Zealand dollar to the upside. If the CPI report comes out hot and we get a stronger dollar, I would primarily prefer to look at US dollar CAD to the upside. And also, I'd prefer to look at pound dollar to the downside. You might say, well, why not look at US dollar franc? Well, because if we get a hotter CPI report, you might see risk off kind of coming into markets and Swiss franc is actually a risk off currency. So I would prefer in that event to actually look at pound dollar to the downside, US dollar CAD. So those are the four dollar pairs we'll be looking at in today's video. Okay, so kicking off the watch list, starting with crude oil, as I always do, look at crude oil every single week. However, I do like crude oil for shorts heading into next week. I don't wanna be a buyer of this market. You can see the overall trend is to the downside. The last leg of momentum was down. And on balance, I do favor shorts. And a weaker crude oil is of course going to weigh on the Canadian dollar. We talked about a Canadian dollar short theme last week. Forex didn't really move very much, but that theme rolls over into this week. Start to get the markets moving, volatility coming back into the markets, especially after CPI. I am going to continue to be looking for Canadian dollar shorts as well as oil shorts. So any pullback in this market is going to be viewed as an opportunity next week to look for bearish breakouts. And if you get that bearish breakout, look for a pullback. Very often you get one, sometimes two kind of bear flag or bull flag setups in the four hours in a week, usually only one. You can look for that breakout, pullback and follow through into the 75.86. And if we fail to break out before we test the 80.89, and in this case, I like this prior low over here because you can see this is a major high and this is a lower high and we come back and we break it with momentum. So we pull back and we retest the broken Kiev support turned into resistance. This sets up a really nice area here where we become overbought on the week in what's otherwise a kind of weak market above the 80.89. And it sets up the potential to fade that, especially if we breach this and we test this low, that's going to be a place I'm going to be looking at short term one to two day opportunity to the downside in crude oil next week. Okay, so kicking off the Forex universe with the dollar pairs and the dollar pairs I favor the most are the dollar long plays. Now, all of these markets I would expect probably will just chop around, not do too much, leading in CPI, and then they'll start to move on CPI. That tends to be what happens. But I do favor US dollar long plays because A, the dollar is still in the positive side of the scorecards. And also we are technically setting up potentially for a bigger break higher. And at the same time, we've seen in previous ISM reports, the prices paid components, which is a bit of a proxy for inflation, coming out hotter than expected and actually jumping up quite high, even as growth slowed. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a slightly hotter than expected print or at least an inline print. And so I do favor the dollar long plays, but we'll be looking at some dollar short plays as a plan B backup setup or setups in this case. The first thing to note is with the pound dollar, which is the number one play that I'll be looking at to the downside next week, should we get a bullish dollar from CPI. You can see we are actually starting to channel down. You can see this really strong drive through the top of the channel. And then we had this kind of rejection and we kind of closed and we sort of didn't do anything next day, but then we started to push down. So going into next week, should we get a hot and expected CPI? I would be looking for this market to come down. And I do think we could eventually, maybe not next week, but see this come down, test the low. So dropping down to the four hour chart and I've removed the diagonal trend line here because they can act as illusions. You can chop around them and the projected volatility ranges here are much more useful than kind of subjective diagonal trend lines. That's why you don't see me draw them on very often. I might use them kind of for aesthetics just to see something trending down or channeling, but generally speaking, I don't really like them. And so going into next week, I can either be short this market or do nothing. I expect this market to kind of chop around 
and then coming into the CPI report, if we get a hotter than expected CPI print, what I'll be looking for is the pound to sell off, pull back probably on Thursday, and then a follow through into the 1.24158. There's your follow through trade. And also, if we get a kind of as expected inflation print, now it might not come out hotter than expected, it might not really come out cooler or softer than expected. What might happen is it might come out pretty much as expected, but inflation is still too high in order to step in and for the Fed to cut rates. So in that scenario, there may be a scenario where you see the pound pushing higher initially against the dollar on a kind of neutral decision. And if we get a kind of neutral decision and the pound pushes into the prior high and above the 1.2635, I would be looking to fade this for one or two days to the downside. Next is US dollar CAD. Now this is the second market I'd like to look at if we get a hotter than expected CPI print and we get some dollar strength post CPI. What I'll be looking for is this to continue down, just kind of chop around and then into Wednesday, we see the CPI released and we start to see the US dollar strengthen, it pulls back. And then after the CPI release, we get a rally into the 1.3767. So you get that kind of bull flag setup because you get the initial drive on the CPI report, you get profit taking coming in, it kind of consolidates, and then that sets up a second drive into the 1.3767. And of course, if you breach this level, you essentially only have a 30% chance of continuing in any significant way. That does actually change slightly with catalysts. So when you have a news catalyst, you could actually see this blast through the upper and lower bounds. It's roughly a 70% chance of staying within this within the week without catalysts. So kind of just in a normal week without any kind of catalyst. So with CPI, you can certainly see them breaching these levels and that's why you have to be a little bit careful when fading these interest rate decisions or CPI releases. And so the second thing I'd be looking for, I can only buy this market or do nothing. I can't sell this. So the second thing I'd be looking for is if we start to consolidate into Wednesday and we get a neutral release. Now a neutral release could see US dollar initially selling off. We breach the 1.3578 and that would set up the kind of opportunity to fade that. So we're not looking at a soft CPI print. We're just looking at a neutral CPI print. The dollar initially sells off, comes down below the 1.3578 and that would set up an opportunity for one or two day reversal to the upside. So those are two setups I'll be looking at next week in US dollar CAD post CPI. So the next market is the market that I would most like to go to if we get a soft CPI print and we see a weaker dollar. If we see a soft CPI print and we see the US dollar sell off, the currency I'd like to pair a weaker dollar with the most would be the Australian dollar to the long side. So what I would like to see is I'd like to see this market just continue to chop, do nothing into Wednesday as is often the case, leading up to CPI, interest rates, decision, et cetera. And then we get a weaker dollar, softer CPI report. We get that initial drive up in Aussie dollar. The market pulls back because you're profit taking coming in and then you get that second drive into the 0 0.6679. So that's the post CPI setup I'll be looking at on a weaker dollar. Alternatively, if the market comes down and it just kind of chops around, does nothing, if we breach the 0 0.6527 on a neutral CPI release, that basically opens a door for a potential one or two day reversal to the upside in this market anyway. And the fourth Forex pair here with the US dollar in it that I'd like to look at is Euro dollar. Now again, I'm using this next week as a plan B. If we get a softer CPI print and the dollar sells off, I would personally be looking at this as a potential breakout to the upside. You get that kind of follow through trade, pull back, and a follow through into the 1.08545. Overall, however, this is not a particularly strong market and I probably wouldn't want to fade this. Maybe I'll fade Aussie dollar to the upside. Probably wouldn't want to fade this from the lower bound. So this would really be the primary opportunity post CPI that I'd be looking for if you're going to look for that intraweek breakout in Euro dollar. However, because of the nature of Euro dollar, the Euro makes up 57% of the dollar index. If we actually get a hotter than expected CPI print, I would expect this to also sell off. You can almost play this both ways next week. So the market pulls back, you get a hotter than expected CPI print, you get a sell off, a pullback, and you can actually look for that the other way into the 1.0687. In this scenario, I would prefer to short pound dollar, and I would also prefer to be long US dollar CAD next week, but almost certainly you will see these opportunities in Euro dollar either way as well next week. Moving on to the Aussie pairs, starting with Aussie Frank. I can either buy this market or do nothing next week. I cannot sell this market. What I'll be looking for is any pullback. And you see it's kind of just 
chopping around. It's not really finding any direction here. But any pullback would be viewed as an opportunity if we do get a breakout inch a week. We get that drive higher. You can look for the pullback and a follow through into the 0 0.6048. And that would be a great profit taking opportunity above this level next week. And if we consolidate lower and we test this low and we kind of pierce through here and breach the 0 0.5923, this is the second place I'll be looking for potential opportunity next week. Be looking for a one or two day reversal to the upside in Aussie Frank. Next is Aussie CAD. Now this is a market I really like heading into next week and I really liked it last week for further upside, but it just consolidated. It didn't go anywhere. You can see it just kind of flagged. This is setting up for further upside. So what I'd like to see is any kind of pullback. This is going to be viewed as an opportunity to look for that breakout, a kind of bull flag breakout. It's a bigger bull flag. You get the mini kind of breakout, pullback, you get a smaller bull flag, and then a rally into the 0 0.91008. And that'd be a great profit taking target next week if you start to breach or trade above this. And the second thing I'll be looking for is if we just continue to consolidate and we end up selling off down below, the 0 0.8959 and there's a nice low here as well where you can try and catch this trade into that low try and catch it for a one or two day reversal to the upside in Aussie CAD next week but again I can either buy this or do nothing selling this market is not an option for me next week and the final Aussie pair here is pound Aussie now pound Aussie to the downside is a nice one going into next week why because we've got the top performing currency in Aussie dollar versus the pound which last week we had a kind of dovish outcome to the Bank of England meeting where we saw two MPC members actually vote to cut rates. And it was expected that none were going to do that and all nine would vote to keep rates unchanged. Instead, only seven voted to keep rates unchanged, two voted for a cut. So it was a dovish outcome. And I think we're going to see some follow through to the downside in the pound pairs. We are gonna see some weakness in the pound coming into this week. So going into this week, any pullback is an opportunity only in this case to look for a short a breakout intraweek, pull back and a bear flag set up into the 1.8815. Or if we just continue to pull back all the way, looking for a breach of the 1.91205. And this is going to be a great place next week to start to look for one or two day reversal to the downside in pound Aussie. Moving on to the New Zealand pairs and wrapping up the Forex universe with New Zealand pairs, starting with New Zealand Frank. Again, kind of choppy, but I'm going to be looking primarily for long setups. Any consolidation, is viewed as the opportunity to look for a bullish breakout, a pullback for that bull flag setup into the upper bound at the 0 0.5512. And alternatively, if we chop around or we sell off into the 0 0.54016, and I like this setup because we've got multiple lows under here, which have held. And if we push through here, we're also going to be breaching these lows. This is going to set up potentially a very nice opportunity to fade this for one or two days to the upside should we breach 0 0.54016 next week. Next is New Zealand CAD. Again, I can either buy this or do nothing. I cannot sell this market next week. What I'll be looking for is a continued pullback, a correction. You can see we're kind of already, we do have this kind of bull flag setup where we get the momentum, but it's very shallow and then it starts to chop. So all of this is likely one move. So we start to correct. We're going to be looking for a potential breakout in this market to the upside a pullback and then that kind of bull flag set up into the 0 0.82995. Or alternatively, you can look for next week if we just continue to correct into the 0 0.81617 and we breach this level, we become oversold on the week. And this is going to set up the opportunity to look for momentum to fade and look for a one or two day reversal to the upside back inside this range next week. And last but not least, we have Pound New Zealand. Now, very much like Pound Aussie, I do like this setup going into next week. We've got that kind of fundamental catalyst for further downside in the pound this week. And you pair that with those kind of inflationary currencies. I think this has a good chance of being a good short next week. So any pullback in this market is viewed as an opportunity to look for this bear flag setup, kind of breakout, pull back, and a follow through into 2.0641 and that is a good profit taking opportunity for next week you can continue lower but in all probability you're going to at least start to kind of wade through treacle as you push through these and you're going to see a slowdown in these assets so a good profit taking opportunity below that level and if we pull back and almost inversely if we start to breach the 2.0976 this is actually a good opportunity to look for momentum to fade and for one or two day reversal to the downside in Pound New Zealand next week.
Okay, so wrapping up the video with gold and silver and how I'd like to use gold and silver next week, as I often do in these videos, is to have one which allows me to play a hot and expected print and one which allows me to play a soft and expected print. And on balance, I would prefer to be short gold versus the dollar and long silver if we get a softer report. So what I'd like to see is any kind of continuation to the upside or consolidation in this market. If we then get a hot and expected report and we get a sell off in gold, and I know people say, well, with inflation, you know, gold tends to rise. Yes, you can see gold going up at the same time as the dollar goes up, but the DXY tends to be a headwind. However, just a caveat here would be that if we do get a hot and expected print, although gold, I would be looking for that potential, maybe double top and then bear flag and sell off into the 2319.96. If we get that kind of setup, I would probably prefer to be short pound dollar, even euro dollar, to be honest, than short gold. So there is a setup you can look at in gold here if you like. Alternatively, you can actually try and play gold both ways next week. In other words, if we get a consolidation like this, and we get this kind of ball flag pattern setting up and we get a softer than expected print and we break out this way again you could look for the reversal and look for that to trade into the high over here and the 2413.63 so you can kind of play gold both ways but certainly the next market silver is an asset i'd be interested in trading specifically if we get a softer than expected cpi print coming out of the us next week Okay, so wrapping up the video with silver and silver is an asset that has really been outperforming the commodities part of the Hedgedash algorithms and I wouldn't really want to be short this next week. If we get a hot and expected print and the dollar is stronger, then, you know, maybe gold short out of the two of them. But even, you know, euro dollar, pound dollar, these kind of forex pairs would be better shorts than gold. But certainly if we get a weaker dollar, I do think silver will outperform to the upside. So any kind of pullback in this asset, what I'd like to see is... I'd like to see a, if we get a softer print, a breakout in silver, you can look for the pullback and the follow through into the 29.49. This asset to the upside will really be given a tailwind should we get a softer than expected print on Wednesday. If we kind of consolidate and chop around, we get a neutral print and we trade into the 27.29. You could also potentially look, especially if we breach it and test this low, you could look for that one or two day reversal to the upside. If we get a hotter than expected print, probably wouldn't bother trying to fade this again i would pivot to those dollar pairs being long us dollar cad short euro dollar maybe but certainly short pound dollar as well after the dovish outcome of the boe meeting last week so that is it from me for today guys as always i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did why not consider joining us in the gmt training room each day where i look at the best markets as well as sharing real-time setups that I'm personally looking at trading with members as part of our GMT training program. Don't forget, you can also get a two-week free trial to the Cutting Edge Hedgedash trading app used in today's video by heading over to www.hedgedash.com.